Hello! I'd like to talk today about my experiences in Japan and this is a, a place I went when I was 18 years old and I went into a high school and joined um, a class and just sort of like went along to lessons with them as if I was a real student with them. Um, so it was a really unique kind of experience that I had. And when I came back, um, at this point in my life, I didn't have the ability to verbalise, um, to have sort of like thoughts about things consciously and verbalise them. So when I came back from Japan, people that saw me, that knew me from home, used to sort of rush up to me and say, how was Japan? And I couldn't answer at all. So it was really crushing for me to experience that, like knowing um, people wanted to hear about it and they wanted to like, be able to learn from what I'd learned and I couldn't share it. So I want to start now. Uh, so yes, when I um, got to Japan, um, first of all, we stayed in a youth hostel in Tokyo and it was just, um, I don't know if it was three days or so. It was an orientation, part of the orientation. So they just kind of like plunk you down and um, you're with loads of other foreign, foreigners, so like loads of other British, American and Australian and etc. Um, students in the same position as I was before we get divided up to go like you're going to that part of Japan, you're going to that job. There. <laughs> right, so um, yeah, one of the things I noticed was, um, you know, when you were like walking around, so in this ground of this um, big youth hostel setup where we were staying, um, you would just be sort of like walking to breakfast and then there would be a group of let's say women that were all in some kind of uniform they must have been in a different group from ours and they would all at the same time all just when you walk past each other they're sort of like oh hey all the famous which is like good morning in japanese and then you have to reply and it's like something you have to do you know like in our culture over here we can say good morning or we cannot say good morning but over there is prescribed. Yes, you are going to say good morning. It's very important. It's a greeting. I think it's aisats. I mean, it's a long time since I've used any of my Japanese, so I'm sorry. Um, so you have to sort of um, greet people. So that was put me on the spot already because I couldn't really speak as such. I could say words and I could say string maybe a sentence together, but that was it. But it's always been easier for me to speak another language or a different accent than just to talk like straight from me so um i think after like um a, th a day or so i n i'd kind of noticed like oh right everybody says good morning to each other and then we're supposed to reply and this is what you do this is what you do you know it's not like um i don't want to be rude so and i'm trying to learn this culture and fit in and do the right thing by them so then I started to be able to like answer and it was really exciting because like I knew right when they say this they're gonna say it they are gonna say it and I'm gonna answer it's like there was no question mark over it anymore because I really struggle with like with dyspraxia we struggle with social cues and we don't know I don't know like when I'm supposed to do something and whether or not I'm supposed to do something and it's very very stressful for me in our culture in England where like you might say hi to somebody or you might not, or you might say it in a different... Um, it's difficult for me as a dyspraxic to get the right tone of voice and the right volume. So I might say something, and it's happened so many times that I seem to have said it in the wrong way and it wasn't polite enough somehow. But I can't really control that and I can't tell. So I can't... And then I just put so much effort in trying to say it in a good way. So like when I say thank you to somebody, for example, um, even to this day, I really, really struggle with trying to say thank you in a way that makes it sound like I'm being genuine. Because I am being genuine, that's why I'm saying thank you. Like, everything that comes out of my mouth is genuine from my point of view. But I feel like the way I say it, it might not come across that I'm being genuine. So I have to make sure I say it in the right way. Otherwise, it might sound like I wasn't really that th thankful. Or like, um, I just said it because... I had to or like uh, even that I was being sarcastic and that I'm saying thank you and it's rude that I'm saying thank you so it's like really difficult to get it right for us with like how we say things so um so we were doing this like good morning to the other people in the same site that was one thing I noticed early on and another interesting thing I noticed um, I don't know if this is going to be completely unrelated but it was at the same time that the breakfast is so, so interesting over here we tend to kind of a lot of people have a sweet ish breakfast like cereal which is 
what we've been marketed to have. But over there, they just have like a lot of different savory options. You could have sweet, but I love that. It, it sort of like just break, broke that barrier in my mind of like, oh, you could just have like chicken soup for breakfast. I never knew that. You know, when you've just never thought of that. And it just see at the beginning, some people were sort of really hesitant, you know, amongst our group of thinking like, oh, like, you know, miso soup for breakfast or something. But then when you do it, and then to me, it's sort of like, it sets me up really well for the day to have something savory in the morning. I feel more like, um, cause I have like a, well, I mean, I don't know if this is why, but my nervous system is really, really like on high alert all the time. And it always has been, it's never been sort of, I can access different states, but like in general, I'm like really tense. Um, and I think it helps when I have certain kind of food at certain kind of parts of the day. So having savoury in the morning, um, that was a good like kind of barrier for me to break down to thinking like, oh, I could just have what I want in the breakfast. I could just have like potato in the breakfast <laughs> for breakfast. Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, so then after the orientation, we got sent to our places where we were going to be. So then we were kind of like on our own because we weren't with the others, but that's fine because that's what we'd signed up for. So that was fine. It wasn't like really scary or anything from my point of view. But then I was sent, so I was sent to a city, um, uh, but like a very, un, not a famous, well, yeah, it's famous for some things, but not like you would have heard of it unless you're like really expert on Japan. And then we were put in a host family and they were going to look after us. And you know, the first thing I did when I went, we, I got taken to their house because I was going to stay with them. They were going to like, su you know, supervise me and make sure I had enough food and things like that because I was a minor. And um, I walked into the house with my trainers on. I'm so sorry. Like, I, this is such a big no-no in Japanese culture. And I just like, <laughs> it, I think it's partly my dyspraxia and partly my just being in a different culture and being so in the habit because in England we can just walk in and out of houses with our shoes on unless somebody says like please can you take your shoes off some people have that and that's more of an individual thing but over there it's very very important that you leave your shoes in the genkan you have to take them off and the first thing I did was like, step in go across the lounge and then everybody was like <gasps> And, I, and I'd already made this massive blunder the second I arrived, so I'm really sorry about that. It wasn't because I wasn't trying, but I was just so, like, used to it. That even though it had already been drilled into me by this point, like, right, when you get to the house, somebody's house, you take your shoes off, and then this is what you say. But I didn't. Sorry. <sighs> so that's the, my first thing. And I think I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to go on load of tangents and then go over 10 minutes, because my 10 minute block is like, um, it lets me use that subtitles app to put subtitles on these. So I'm trying to keep them within that, not just over. Right, so there you go. And thanks for listening.